Kalima, Russian, Kalima IPA, K -ma, is a region located in the Russian Far East. It is bounded by the East Siberian Sea and the Arctic Ocean in the north and the Sea of Okhotsk to the south. The region gets its name from the Kalima River and mountain range, parts of which were not discovered until 1926. Today the region consists roughly of the Chukotka Autonomous Okrug and the Magadan Oblast. The area, part of which is within the Arctic Circle, has a subarctic climate with very cold winters lasting up to six months of the year. Permafrost and tundra cover a large part of the region. Average winter temperatures range from minus 19 degrees Celsius to minus 38 degrees Celsius even lower in the interior, and average summer temperatures, from plus 3 degrees Celsius to plus 16 degrees Celsius. There are rich reserves of gold, silver, tin, tungsten, mercury, copper, antimony, coal, oil, and peat. Twenty-nine zones of possible oil and gas accumulation have been identified in the Sea of Okhotsk Shelf. Total reserves are estimated at 3.5 billion tons of equivalent fuel, including 1.2 billion tons of oil and 1.5 billion cubic meters of gas. The principal town Magadan has nearly 100,000 inhabitants and is the largest port in northeastern Russia. It has a large fishing fleet and remains open year round thanks to icebreakers. Magadan is served by the nearby Sokol Airport. There are many public and private farming enterprises. Gold mines, pasta and sausage factories, fishing companies, and a distillery form the city's industrial base. Prehistory During archaeological investigations of Paleolithic sites on the Angara, in 1936 the unique Stone Age site of Burette was discovered which yielded an anthropomorphic sculpture, skulls of rhinoceroses, and surface and semi-subterranean dwellings. The houses were analogous, on one hand, to Paleolithic European houses and, on the other, to ethnographically studied houses of the Eskimos, Chukchi and Koryaks. The indigenous peoples of this region include the Evans, Koryaks, Yupiks, Chukchis, Oryks, Chuvans and Idlemans, who traditionally lived from fishing along the Sea of Okhotsk coast or from reindeer herding in the river Kalima Valley. History. Under Joseph Stalin's rule, Kalima became the most notorious region for the Gulag labor camps. Tens of thousands or more people may have died en route to the area or in the Kalima's series of gold mining, road building, lumbering, and construction camps between 1932 and 1954. It was Kalima's reputation that caused Alexander Solzhenitsyn, author of the Gulag Archipelago, to characterize it as the pole of cold and cruelty in the Gulag system. The Mask of Sorrow monument in Magadan commemorates all those who died in the Kalima forced labor camps and the recently dedicated Church of the Nativity remembers the victims in its icons and stations of the camps. <laughs> <laughs> Emergence of the Gulag camps Gold and platinum were discovered in the region in the early 20th century. During the time of the USSR's industrialization beginning with Joseph Stalin's first five-year plan, 1928–1932 the need for capital to finance economic development was great. The abundant gold resources of the area seemed tailor-made to provide this capital. A government agency Dalstroy Russian, Dalstridge acronym for Far North Construction Trust was formed to organize the exploitation of the area. Prisoners were being drawn into the Soviet penal system in large numbers during the initial period of Kalima's development, most notably from the so-called anti-Kulak campaign and the government's internal war to force collectivization on the USSR's peasantry. These prisoners formed a readily available workforce. The initial efforts to develop the region began in 1932, with the building of the town of Magadan by forced labor. Many projects in the USSR were already using forced labor, most notably the White Sea Baltic Canal. After a grueling train ride on the Trans Siberian Railway, prisoners were disembarked at one of several transit camps, such as Nakhodka and later Venino, and transported across the Sea of Okhotsk to the natural harbor chosen for Magadan's construction. Conditions aboard the ships were harsh. According to a 1987 article in Time magazine, "...during the 1930s the only way to reach Magadan was by ship from Khabarovsk, which created an island psychology and the term Gulag Archipelago. 
Within the crowded prison ships thousands died during transportation. One survivor's memoir recounts that the prison ship DZ Horma was caught in the autumn ice in 1933 while trying to get to the mouth of the Kalima River. When it reached port the following spring, it carried only crew and guards. All 12,000 prisoners were missing, left dead on the ice. It turns out that this incident, widely reported since it was first mentioned in a book published in 1947, could not have happened as the ship DZ Horma was not in Soviet hands until mid-1935. In 1932 expeditions pushed their way into the interior of the Kalima, embarking on the construction of the Kalima Highway, which was to become known as the Road of Bones. Eventually, about 80 different camps dotted the region of the uninhabited taiga. The original director of the Kalima camps was Eduard Berzin, a Cheka officer. Berzin was later removed 1937 and shot during the period of the Great Purges in the USSR. The Arctic camps At the height of the purges, around 1937, Alexander Solzhenitsyn's account quotes camp commander Naftali Frankel as establishing the new law of the archipelago. We have to squeeze everything out of a prisoner in the first three months. After that we don't need him anymore. The system of hard labor and minimal or no food reduced most prisoners to helpless. Goners. Dohodiaga, in Russian. Conditions varied depending on the state of the country. Many of the prisoners in Kalima were academics or intellectuals. They included Mikhail Kravchuk a Ukrainian mathematician who by the early 1930s had received considerable acclaim in the West. After a summary trial, apparently for reluctance to take part in the accusations of some of his colleagues, he was sent to Kalima where he died in 1942. Hard work in the labor camp, harsh climate and meager food, poor health as well as accusations and abandonment by most of his colleagues, took their toll. Kravchuk perished in Magadan in eastern Siberia, about 4,000 miles 6, kilometers from the place where he was born. Kravchuk's last article had appeared soon after his arrest in 1938. However, after this publication, Kravchuk's name was stricken from books and journals. The prisoner population of Kalima increased substantially in 1946 with the arrival of thousands of former Soviet POWs liberated by Western Allied forces or the Red Army at the close of World War II. Those judged guilty of collaboration with the enemy frequently received 10 or 25 year prison sentences to the Gulag, including Kalima. There were, however, some exceptions. Rumor suggested that Soviet agents seized Leon Theremin, an inventor, in the United States and forced him to return to the Soviet Union. He actually returned voluntarily. Joseph Stalin had Theremin imprisoned at the Butyrka in Moscow. He later came to work in the Kalima gold mines. Although rumors of his execution circulated widely, Theremin was, in fact, put to work in a Shiroshka a secret research laboratory, together with other scientists and engineers, including aircraft designer Andrei Tupolev and rocket scientist Sergei Korolyov also a Kalima inmate. The Soviet Union rehabilitated Theremin in 1956. The Kalima camps switched to using mostly free labor after 1954, and in 1956 Nikita Khrushchev ordered a general amnesty that freed many prisoners. Various estimates have put the Kalima death toll from 1930 to the mid-1950s between 250,000 and over a million people. <laughs> Dalstroy officials Dalstroy was the agency created to manage exploitation of the Kalima area, based principally on the use of forced labor. In the words of Azerbaijani prisoner Ayub Bagirov, "...the entire administration of the Dalstroy, economic, administrative, physical and political—was in the hands of one person who was invested with many rights and privileges." The officials in charge of Dalstroy, i.e., the Kalima Gulag camps were, Eduard Petrovich Berzin, 1932 to 1937. Karp Alexandrovich Pavlov, 1937 to 1939. Ivan Fedorovich Nikishev, 1940 to 1948. Ivan Grigorovich Petrenko, 1948 to 1950. I. L. Mitrikov, from 1950 until Dalstroy was taken over by the Ministry of Metallurgy on the 18th of March 1953. Topic. 
Calendar of historical events A detailed calendar of events 1928–1929, gold mines established in the Kalima River region. Commencement of regular mining operations 13 November 1931, establishment of Dahlstroy 4 February 1932, Eduard Berzin, manager of Dahlstroy, arrives with the first ten prisoners. 1934, the headcount increases to 30,000 inmates. 1937, the number of inmates increases to over 70.000, 51,500 kg of gold mined. June 1937, Stalin reprimands the Kalima commandants for their undue leniency towards the inmates. December 1937, Berzin is charged with espionage and subsequently tried and shot in August 1938. 4 March 1938, Dahlstroy is put under the jurisdiction of NKVD, USSR. December 1938, OSIP Mandelstam, an eminent Russian poet, dies in a transit camp en route to Kalima, 1939, number of inmates now 138,200. The 11th of October 1939, Commandants Pavlov and Stepan Garanin sacked from their posts. Garanin subsequently shot. 1941, headcount of inmates reaches 190,000. Also some 3,700 Dahlstroy contract workers. 23 of May 1944, U.S. Vice President Henry A. Wallace arrives for a NKVD-hosted 25-day tour of Magadan, Kalima, and the Russian Far East. October 1945, camp for the Japanese prisoners of war is established in Magadan, to provide extra labor. 1,952 to 199,726 inmates, the highest ever in the history of the Kalima camps and Dalstroy. May 1952, according to Commandant Mitrikov, Sevoslag is dissolved, Dahlstroy transformed into the General Board of Labor Camps March 1953, after Stalin's death, Dahlstroy transferred to the Ministry of Metallurgy, camp units come under the jurisdiction of the Soviet Ministry of Justice. September 1953, Dahlstroy camp units taken over by the newly established Management Board of the Northeastern Corrective Labor Camps. Harsh camp regime gradually relaxed. 1953–1956, period of mass amnesties and the release of most political prisoners. Some camp closures begin. 1957, Dahlstroy liquidated. Many of the former prisoners continued to work in the mines with a modified status and a few new prisoners arrived, at least until the early 1970s. Post-Dalstroy developments The Chukot Autonomous Okrug site provides details of developments after the official closure of the camps. In 1953, the Magadan Oblast or region was established. Dalstroy was transferred to the jurisdiction of the Ministry of Metallurgy and later to the Ministry of Non-Ferrous Metallurgy. Industrial and economic evolution Industrial gold mining started in 1958 leading to the development of mining settlements, industrial enterprises, power plants, hydroelectric dams, power transmission lines and improved roads. By the 1960s, the region's population exceeded 100,000. With the dissolution of Dahlstroy, the Soviets adopted new labor policies. While the prison labor was still important, it mainly consisted of common criminals. New manpower was recruited from all Soviet nationalities on a voluntary basis, to make up for the sudden lack of political prisoners. Young men and women were lured to the frontier land of Kalima with the promise of high earnings and better living. But many decided to leave. The region's prosperity suffered under Soviet liberal policies in the end of the 1980s and 1990s with a considerable reduction in population, apparently by 40% in Magadan. A U.S. report from the late 1990s gives details of the region's economic shortfall citing outdated equipment, bankruptcies of local companies and lack of central support. It does however report substantial investments from the United States and the governor's optimism for future prosperity based on revival of the mining industries. Topic: 
Last political prisoners Dahlstroy and the camps did not close down completely. The Kalima Authority, which was reorganized in 1958–59 the 31st of December 1958, finally closed in 1968. However the mining activities did not stop. Indeed, government structures still exist today under the Ministry of Natural Resources. In some cases, the same individuals seem to have stayed on over the years under new management. There are indications that the political prisoners were gradually phased out over the years but it was only as a result of Boris Yeltsin's far-reaching reforms in the 1990s that the very last prisoners were released from Kalima. The Russian author Andrei Amalric appears to have been one of the last high-profile political prisoners to be sent to Kalima. In 1970, he published two books, Will the Soviet Union Survive Until 1984? An Involuntary Journey to Siberia. As a result, he was arrested for defaming the Soviet state in November 1970 and sentenced to hard labor, apparently in Kalima, for what turned out to be a total of almost five years. Topic. Accounts of the Kalima Gulag camps A detailed description of conditions in the camps is provided by Varlam Shalimov in his Kalima Tales. In Dry Rations he writes, Each time they brought in the soup, it made us all want to cry. We were ready to cry for fear that the soup would be thin. And when a miracle occurred and the soup was thick we couldn't believe it and ate it as slowly as possible. But even with thick soup in a warm stomach there remained a sucking pain, we'd been hungry for too long. All human emotions—love, friendship, envy, concern for one's fellow man, compassion, longing for fame, honesty—had left us with the flesh that had melted from our bodies. During and after the Second World War the region saw major influxes of Ukrainians, Polish, German, Japanese, and Korean prisoners. There is a particularly memorable account written by a Romanian survivor, Michael Solomon, in his book Magadan see bibliography below, which gives us a vivid picture of both the transit camps leading to the Kalima and the region itself. The Hungarian, George Bien, author of The Lost Years, also recounts the horrors of Kalima. His story has also led to a film, Soviet Gold, the first autobiographical book written by Vladimir Nikolaevich Petrov, is almost entirely a description of the author's life in Magadan and the Kalima gold fields. In Bitter Days of Kalima, Ayub Bagirov, an Azerbaijani accountant who was finally rehabilitated, provides details of his arrest, torture and sentencing to eight finally to become 18 years imprisonment in a labor camp for refusing to incriminate a fellow official for financial irregularities. Describing the train journey to Siberia, he writes, "...the terrible heat, the lack of fresh air, the unbearable overcrowded conditions all exhausted us. We were all half-starved. Some of the elderly prisoners, who had become so weak and emaciated, died along the way. Their corpses were left abandoned alongside the railroad tracks." A vivid account of the conditions in Kalima is that of Brother Jean Thompson of Kiev's Faith Mission. He recounts how he met Vyacheslav Palman, a prisoner who survived because he knew how to grow cabbages. Palman spoke of how guards read out the names of those to be shot every evening. On one occasion a group of 169 men were shot and thrown into a pit. Their fully clothed bodies were found after the ice melted in 1998. One of the most famous political prisoners in Kalima was Vadim Kozin, possibly Russia's most popular romantic tenor, who was sent to the camps in February 1945, apparently for refusing to write a song about Stalin. Although he was initially freed in 1950 and could return to his singing career, he was soon framed by his enemies on charges of homosexuality and sent back to the camps. Though released once again several years later, he was never officially rehabilitated and remained in exile in Magadan where he died in 1994. Speaking to journalists in 1982, he explained how he had been forced to tour the camps. The Politburo formed brigades which would, under surveillance, go on tours of the concentration camps and perform for the prisoners and the guards, including those of the highest rank. 
In July 1993 Vadim Kozin told his story, sang and played his piano probably for the last time in the documentary on the Gulag in the far east of Siberia Gode Vergetin in Siberia aka Gold Lost in Siberia www.imdb.com by Dutch author Gerard Jacobs and filmmaker Theo Ettenbogard Finally, Ukrainian prisoner Nikolai Getman who spent the years 1945–1953 in Kalima, records his testimony in pictures rather than words. But he does have a plea. Some may say that the Gulag is a forgotten part of history and that we do not need to be reminded. But I have witnessed monstrous crimes. It is not too late to talk about them and reveal them. It is essential to do so. Some have expressed fear on seeing some of my paintings that I might end up in Kalima again this time for good. But the people must be reminded of one of the harshest acts of political repression in the Soviet Union. My paintings may help achieve this." The Jamestown Foundation provides access to all 50 of Getman's paintings together with explanations of their significance. <laughs> Estimating the number of victims The amount of hard evidence in regard to Kalima is extremely limited. Unfortunately, no reliable archives exist about the total number of victims of Stalinism, all numbers are estimates. In his book, Stalin 1996, Edvard Rydzinski explains how Stalin, while systematically destroying his comrades in arms, at once obliterated every trace of them in history. He personally directed the constant and relentless purging of the archives. That practice continued to exist after the death of the dictator. In an account of a visit to Magadan by Harry Wu in 1999, there is a reference to the efforts of Alexander Biryukov, a Magadan lawyer to document the terror. He is said to have compiled a book listing every one of the 11,000 people documented to have been shot in Kalima camps by the state security organ, the NKVD. Biryukov, whose father was in the Gulag at the time he was born, has begun researching the location of graves. He believed some of the bodies were still partially preserved in the permafrost. It is therefore impossible to provide final figures on the number of victims who died in Kalima. Robert Conquest, author of The Great Terror, now admits that his original estimate of three million victims was far too high. In his article Death Tolls for the Man-Made Megadeths of the 20th Century, Matthew White estimates the number of those who died at 500,000. In Stalin's slave ships, Martin Bollinger undertakes a careful analysis of the number of prisoners who could have been transported by ship to Magadan between 1932 and 1953 some and the probable number of deaths each year averaging 27%. This produces figures significantly below earlier estimates but, as the author emphasizes, his calculations are by no means definitive. In addition to the number of deaths, the dreadful conditions of the camps and the hardships experienced by the prisoners over the years need to be taken into account. In his review of Bollinger's book, Norman Polmar refers to 130,000 victims who died at Kalima. As Bollinger reports in his book, the three million estimate originated with the CIA in the 1950s and appears to be a flawed estimate. This number is also estimated by the last survivors. Ann Applebaum, a Pulitzer Prize winner, carried out an extensive investigation of the gulags, and explained in a lecture in 2003, that it's extremely difficult not only to document the facts given the extent of the cover-up but to bring the truth home. <laughs> <laughs> Ecology This ecoregion encompasses the drainages of Arctic rivers from the Indijurka River eastward to Chanskaya Guba Bay. In the west, the Indijurka River drainage is separated from the Kroma River and Yana Rivers by the spurs of the Polisi Kryaj Range and the Cherskogo Range. Paleoecology <inaudible> 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 During the Pleistocene this part of Beringia the ecology was quite different than now with the extinct woolly mammoth and the woolly rhinoceros present, the polar bear most likely evolved here. See also Russia portal Geography portal